Hi, my name is Terry Sproul, and I want to welcome you to my studio. Tonight is our Tuesday night live show. So if you're joining me at a later date on my YouTube channel, think about joining me live on Tuesday. If you are on my YouTube channel, I really appreciate you giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate that. Also, think about joining my group on Facebook called All Things Terry Sproul. Okay, tonight we're going to do a canvas. And as promised, if when I'm done with the canvas, I'm going to give it away. So somebody who's live gets to get one of the canvases. So um, thank you guys for showing up. I'm going to switch cameras and get going because we want to get done tonight. So let me switch cameras. I have some been have to admit I've been painting on my desk. So so I've got some paint out here and I start doing a little prep work. So let me get this stuff out of the way. And we will get going here. <clears throat> Real quick. There we go. Okay, I've got a little canvas that I picked up at, um, it's actually an artist store that I go to. It's called Artist and Crafters War uh, Warehouse. And it's kind of like a Dick Licks. It's a, it's a, you know, a, a art store, not a Michael's, which is I consider a craft store. But I picked up these canvases. I think it's a 5x7-ish. Maybe it's an 8x8. I don't know what the size is. First thing I want to do though is I'm going to glue down this um, paper from Tim Holtz. This is his tissue paper. And you can get this on Amazon, Michaels, uh, most of your local scrapbook stores have it, um, or art stores, whatever you have close by. If you can uh, get your local stores first, go for that. If not, you know, hit Michaels up. So I'm going to just grab some gel medium. And actually, I guys, I have a funny story for you guys tonight too about um, the product that we're going to use, uh, the Neo Colors. Um, <laughs> when I went to purchase these, they were actually my Valentine present from my husband. He didn't know he bought them for me, but he did. You know, I hope you girls do that. Go out and buy your own presents. I always get what I want that way. I'm just using a credit card just because I find it easier. And this uh, gel medium is really getting towards the bottom. This is really my last use of it. I really got to buy a new one when I go down to the city this week. So just grabbing some gel medium, putting it on here. Credit cards is allowing me to get it on nice and smooth. Or room key card, actually. It's not even a credit card. Okay, I'm gonna lay this down. And I'm gonna use the other side of the credit card just to get any of the air bubbles out. And it's a little longer than the canvas, but that's okay. Once it dries, I'm gonna cut that off. Okay, so we'll give that a second to dry and we'll cut that off. The nice part about the uh, room key cards or credit cards is you can just throw them away when you're done. Don't even have to clean them. Okay, so let's give that a second to dry. But I wanted to play with these uh, Neo Colors. Um, I've been watching a lot of videos, as I always do, to learn new things. And I discovered that a lot of um, art journalists were using something called Neo, Neo Colors. So I went off to my favorite art store and bought Neo Colors and didn't realize that there is a one, see that, and there's a two. Now personally, when I wasn't thinking, I, I didn't read it or anything, I assumed one was one set of colors and two was just another set of colors. No, 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 no. This is the funny story. They are two completely different products. <laughs> so when you go buy this, um, make sure you know what you're buying. The Neo Color ones are water resistant wax pen pastels. The Neo Color twos are water soluble wax pastels. Completely different things. They do completely different um, uh, stuff on your page. So definitely make sure you get the um, the Neo Colors too. Now they are fun to use though. The both of them. And I found that they work really nice together because one 
as you read, was water resistant, and the other one was, um, hold on, was water soluble. So I did the sunflower here in the Neo Color Ones and the words in Neo Color Ones, and then I did my background in the Neo Colors too. And since these are water resistant and these are water, excuse me, these are water soluble and these are water resistant, they wouldn't bleed into each other. So it actually kind of is fun and they work out nice together. But I'm only going to use one of them tonight, but I did want to show you how awesome they do work out together. Okay. Uh, let's bring the canvas back up here. Pretty sure this is completely dry, but let me just throw a heat on it real quick. Just to make sure they're dry completely. And I'm going to cut this off real quick also. Just to get it out of my way. So I'm just real quickly going down and cutting that off. And I won't throw that away because that can be used in another art journal. Okay, so the Neo Color 1s, or excuse me, Neo Color 2s are water um, soluble crayons. They're basically like a crayon. These are great to travel with because you've got these little tin also. And you see them? They're crayons. And they're water, basically watercolor. So, and I've been playing with these a lot, I have to admit. These are kind of fun. I usually find three colors that I like because I like to work in threes. And seriously, this is how I do it. And this is how I've seen that other people do it. They make circles on their page. And you want it in different random spots. Don't even want to think. You do not necessarily have to um, gesso your page or whatever because these are like watercolors. Uh, I need some over here. Or they are watercolors, basically. And we're going to finish with the yellow. You don't have to get the whole area filled with color, as you see. I just kind of got little bits of splatters everywhere. Then you want to have a water pen. And what I always suggest is I always start with my lightest color first. So that is obviously the yellow here. So I'm going to go in and start moving that yellow. And just getting it wet will start moving that crayon pastel around. And I'm just going to just keep moving it. Just keep getting the yellows going. And I always stay with one color. And this way you don't have any bleeding problems or um, muddy problems. Also, when you think about your colors, remember to pick colors that are not going to make, I used to say mud, but people get upset about mud, that, that will make brown, okay? So make sure you pick colors that will make good colors. If you don't know what to pick, red, yellow, and blue is always a smart choice. Um, you don't necessarily have to clean your brush out in between, but then I'm going to go in with my, get my green going here. I missed that yellow spot over there, but we're just going to blend it in. So now we're pulling out that green. And at this point, and I missed that yellow up there again, so it's okay. We're just going to blend those two together. See how it's starting to become one, cons you know, picture, whatever you want to say, one color. So this is how I do this. This is so fun. Okay, so there's all the green. Okay, I actually did. And again, I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm just going to go right into the blue. Because it'll just make green and blue make turquoise, so. Or a tealish color. And I just start getting these colors, just blend them together. And you can come in with a baby wipe if you want and um, blend them out a little more. Thank you. 
just cleaning off my brush. I'm going to come in with this green and blend this out a little more. And I like to splash water on it too. And that kind of really makes a kind of a cool de design. Okay, that looks like it should be good. Oh, I'm just going to take off the excess here. Pat some of it off. And give it a quick dry. And Terry, yes. Terry, we have a question. How do the Caran d'Ache pens compare to Gelato's? Um, they're very similar. These are more like a crayon, though. They're a little um, more... You know the gelatos are really soft? You know what I mean? That you could actually pick them up and feel them? These are more like a crayon. They're, they're wax. But they do kind of give you the same general look. So they are very similar. And yes, I do agree um, that the uh, Nija uh, water pens are the absolute best. So anyways, I did want to show you those because a lot of, if you go on and watch um, YouTube uh, videos on um, uh, art journaling, a lot of them are using these particular little crayons. So I wanted to introduce you to those. Okay, I have a couple of stamped images somewhere on my desk, oh there they are, that I want to use in my project tonight. And I started coloring them in a little bit and I was using the silk paints tonight to color them in and what would be my advantage on using the silk paints is as you know they are acrylic so I planned on using the acrylic on this part on the flowers here. Oh, these are stamps, sorry, from Sin City Stamps. And this is their Fairies and Blooms, I believe, um, plate. And it is just a beautiful stamp. As you see, it makes a flower on the outside, and it's got this really pretty fairy in it, and flowers going all the way up there, and music in the background. That's why I picked it. Um, so real quickly, I want to color this in and let that dry, and then we're going to put for the background I'm going to use um, watercolor and the reason I would use watercolor is it will resist the acrylic because acrylic and watercolor are, are acrylic is a resist for watercolor I've taught you guys that before so I'm just real quickly going in and painting these flowers in so we can let that dry and then I want to show you a really cool product that actually I've had on my desk for a while, but I really haven't showed you it, and I don't know why. Okay, I just want to do her wings real quick. I'm going to do her wings in an um, iridescent red. The iridescents don't actually show up as a color. They show up as a tint. And what I mean by that is, as you'll see, is it's going to go on clear, but when you turn it in the light, you'll see colors like peacocks. You know, peacocks have that iridescent um, feathers to them, and there's a bunch of birds out there that have that iridescentness to them. So, so again, you can't really see the. Uh, oh yeah, there. You see, white, red, white, red. See that? So those are cool. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry, and we're going to come back to that in a second. Okay, these. This is a cool product that actually I have quite a few on my desk, as you'll see. I mean, seriously. And I can pick up more. <laughs> I mean, this is how many I have on my desk. I think this is the last one. Okay. This is a person who likes her fine line writers. So that's why I said I'm not kind of shocked I haven't showed you these before. Now what you can do with this fine line writer, it comes in two different um, nibs. It comes in a standard nib and a fine nib. 
Um, personally, I like the standard nib the most, but the fine nib is fine too. Um, what you can use these things for are multiple different things. I am putting paint in mine, but I actually have this one right here, and I'm going to use this for glue. So I'm going to put glue, liquid glue in here. And what that's going to allow me to do is glue down really small things because look at this nib. nib. See that? So you get glue in there and you can glue down really small things. And it stays well because it's got, sorry, I should have showed you that, this little needle right there. Okay. That goes inside the, um, the shaft, I should say. Okay. And then it screws down. So your, your, whatever you put in here will last. Now what I put in here is while I was at CHA, um, one of the classes I went to gave us these um, Neo, Radiant Neo inks. And they're a re-inker for their um, ink pads. So this is basically a re-inker. Okay? But they're all these really cool neon colors. See all those colors? Hold on. Let me get in there. There we go. Aren't those pretty? So what I did is I took polymer medium. You don't necessarily need to use gloss. Matter of fact, I kind of regretted that. I'm, I'm a matte girl, I have to admit. But polymer medium gloss, we learned about this. This is naked paint. Okay, so it's paint without color. So what I did, and I won't be able to show you that tonight, but... Um, you just open up the this part, and I poured. Now I didn't fill mine. I filled it about maybe a quarter of the way, about that much, um, with the polymer medium. And then I took, and it depends on how dark you want your color. A little bit of color, you're going to get less color. More color, you're going to get darker color. Makes sense, right? So then I, after I put the polymer medium in, I put. I didn't count, guys. I just poured. I drop, 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 drop until I was happy. Mixed it up, and now I have paint in a bottle with a fine tip. Very cool, huh? Okay. Now, how am I going to use that? I have this really cool stamp also from Sin City Stamp off the same plate. Let me screw it in. Where do you get those? Thank you. Thank you for asking me that. Actually, I've seen them just about everywhere now. Um, Michaels has them. Dick Blix has them. I've seen them on um, Amazon. Um, uh, what's her face? Um, I, I always do. I did put the links to them, Terry, right in the chat room. Great. Thank you. But yes, um, you can find them just about everywhere. I like I said, I've seen them at Michaels. I've seen them at Hobby Lobby. I've seen them at Dick Blix. Um, Donna, Dal Donna Downey has them in her store. So see how nicely that gave me those really fine lines to color that Im image in. And I missed that one. I didn't see it till I got on the camera. Yeah. See that? So it allowed me to color in those really fine spots. Now that's not all you can do with it. Um, I mean, you can do a lot of things if you think about it. Just making scratches on your page or making dots on your page is worth it. I'm trying to get the little needle in there. And then I'm going to come in with, oh, let's take this pretty hot pink. I do like to say I'd squirt it off, off to the side here. You can't see that. Sorry. I always start it off to the side just to make sure there's no air bubbles or whatever going. And then I will go in and start painting. So it allows me to get in here where color I might not have been able to get before because it's so tiny. Oh, this butterfly reminds me of something. I was down at, um, as most of you know, I live in San Diego. And we have this beautiful park called Balboa Park. It's a little over 100 years old. Um, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous park. Well, I was down there the other day, and they have... Um, besides it being a park, it's also a place where we have all of our um, museums and stuff at. Well, they have this one museum. It's actually a botanical garden type place. And they had this tree out front of the botanical garden that was filled with 
but um, uh, monarch butterflies and the little um, what do you call that part that the butterfly cocoon cocoons it had a bunch of cocoons and it had um, the uh, actual butterflies some of them were just hatched and I actually seen in one of the cocoons I could see the butterfly in there it was so friggin cool had to share that with you I just thought that was amazing so look how cool I got to color in that tiny little spots without having to worry about trying to get a paintbrush in there with those beautiful colors love that oh I should do that one down there hold on almost done guys Okay, that looks better. And I here a trick. I don't know if this is needed, but I always, when I'm done, I take my fingers and run it up the the shaft like that before I put my needle back in. And I think it's just my way of making sure I don't get it clogged. Okay, let's put that to the side. Let that dry. Now this should be dry. It is. So I put acrylic paint on that, as you know. So it should be completely dry. And now, if I go in with watercolor, the acrylic paint will resist. So what I'm going to use is my Twinkling H2O. And I should have squirted that, but I didn't. We'll just get that going. Squirt it with a couple of squirts of water. Grab my pen, my uh, water pen. Make sure I have no color in there. Get that moving. Because these um, Twinkling H2Os, if you haven't used them before, they're like a hard patty. That's so that's really, really hard down there. So you got to kind of get the water going and get it moving. And they have some special um, stuff in them that won't, made, won't mold or anything. So they'll last you forever. So now I can go in with these Twinkling H2Os and put this color in the background. And it should, res all the acrylic paint should resist the watercolor so I won't have problems with it going over top. So that's always a fun easy tip to do. Watercolors and acrylic paint, watercolors will always resist. Or acrylic paint will always resist. Oh, before I forget, I'm going to take next week off. I got way too much stuff going on next week and I'm not going to be home on Tuesday, I don't think. So I'm going to just take it off. Terry, Susan wonders, are the 18 gauge ones the ones that Terry's using? I am using actually both. Um, because I just bought a bunch of them, um, I have the fine tip and the standard. But I have to admit, if now that I have the two of them, I will probably buy more of the standard than the fine. Um, and so the fine is 20 gauge and the standard is 18. So I think if I had to tell you to buy one or the other, I'd probably buy the standard because I think the fine tip is too fine for most of the stuff that I do. Hope that answered your question. So again, real quickly, we've got color in the background there. Quick dry. And since the Twinkling H2O's have got a little bit of um, sparkle in them, and so does the silks, that kind of makes a nice match. Okay. Other things I want to do tonight. I got some metal, I thought. I almost always put metal on my canvases, so let me pull. So I pulled some metal out. But it's metal. It's silver. I don't necessarily want silver. And painting metal, eh, that doesn't always work out for the best. So what I found works really cool is embossing it. So check this out. I'm going to take, hold on, that one got wet. A metal um, piece. Now you need to make sure you have some type of tweezers and stuff when you do this, okay? Because metal gets very, very, very hot. So make sure you protect yourself when you do this um, technique. So what you want to do is um, take your, you know, your metal piece and you're going to get embossing powder on it or embossing ink on it, just like you would emboss a stamp. 
So I'm getting pressing that in there, laying it down. It's all got covered with embossing ink. And then I'm going to grab some embossing powder that's not open. I got this at the um, doll at the uh, uh, technique or what is that Tuesday Tuesday morning? Isn't this a pretty color? Some magenta. Oh, come on. Pretty pretty color from Ranger. I don't know if it's. I don't think it's one of Tim Holtz's. Must have been before Tim Holtz was there. So, putting some embossing powder on there, tapping off the excess. Again, this will get very hot, so please, please, please be careful when you do this. I'm going to use um, a pair of tweezers to hold that down. I'm going to use the center there and just heat that. Okay, again, that's very, very hot, so don't touch it. And just, oop, didn't mean to do that. I made a boo boo on it, but that's okay. Pull another one in here. And where'd my embossing pad, pad go? There it is. So, again, I'm just going to get this all um, inked up. Sorry, don't mean to be off camera. Yell at me when I'm off camera, Joe. That back down there. And since I still got the pink in there, I'm going to go another pink one. Okay. Again, pop that out of there. And heat that one up. My favorite thing to do with this is actually um, <clears throat> brads. Brads are a little easier because you can grab the brad and put it in your tweezers or your these are actually hemostats. And then you don't even necessarily need embossing powder to do this one. You can heat this up, heat the metal up. Get it good and hot and just dip it into the embossing powder. It grabs it. See that? And then you can heat it again. And if it's not as, as thick or as you want, you can tap it right back into that embossing powder while it's still hot and get another layer on there. So you can make it very dimensional depending on what you're wanting. See that? So I took a silver brad. And, and don't it, touch it right away. Don't touch that. Yes, that's what I have it in tweezers. Very, very hot. You'd be amazed how hot that is. So please be careful with that. Especially when you double heat it. So I got to do this other one real quick. So again, heating this. Um, the brads is easier. I just heat them up. Dip. Tap off. Heat again. And if you want to, you can go back in for a second dip. And what's kind of cool there, you can do different colors if you want it to. Okay. So how cool is that? So now our brads and our um, flowers are now a different color. So I'm just going to let that sit there. Yep. These trays, if you don't own one of these trays, are, I can't live without these trays. Even though I just got different colors of bossing powder in there, but that's okay. I don't care. It's Vegas style, baby. Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, exactly. 
Okay, so these are all cool now. Come on, focus. So, so that's a really cool way of getting a lot of different colors onto your metal. So grab your embossing powder next time you want to have a metal a different color. And it stays better than I would think than I think acrylic paint does, personally. Okay. <clears throat> Let's bring our painting back in. So we got this. And this this isn't quite dry yet, but close. Be careful when you heat acrylic paint that it bubbles. I actually got that one a little too warm. I do need to put some um, paint on the back of that one too. So I'm just going, again, I'm using the uh, Twinkling H2O's, the same thing I did just a few minutes ago. And the acrylic paint will resist everything that I paint it. So it makes it super easy. You don't even have to think about painting the background. <laughs> You're just kind of filling in the spots that are not colored yet. Super easy. Okay. Again, making sure I don't get my thing too wet so that the uh, acrylic paint doesn't bubble. Okay, so we got that done too. Okay, I'm not quite sure where I'm going tonight, but we're going to see where it turns out as usual. I've got this uh, Life is a Journey sticker that I thought I'd use. And then I got our metal pieces. Those are nice and cool now, the brads, so they're ready to use. I know I'm going to put the brads in here, so let's do that. Now, if your brads are bigger than your piece, which mine look like they might be, you know you can cut them, right? Oh, well, mine's okay. But you can cut those little nibs if you need to. So, sorry. Opening up my brad. Okay, some metal flowers in here. Hmm. I think we need a couple more, more three-dimensional flowers. So let's put this back down here. I got some just miscellaneous um, paper flowers on my desk. I think they are all from um, um, oh god, Prima. God, I couldn't remember their name. So I'm just going to grab um, my silks and paint. Oh, let me open it. So opening a new one. So find the color it's open. Well, let's paint some of these flowers. So this is again, I I I love this tip more than any tip in the world. Um, I buy white flowers um, because I can paint them any color I want, and I know they're going to match whatever I'm doing because they are painting the same color that I painted the background with, or whatever. So I I can't stress enough how I think you should only buy um, white flowers, especially if you already have paint in your um, arsenal. If you like to paint, and I do, I have to admit, I love to paint. I would rather paint than do anything else. So if you like to paint as much as I do, buy white flowers. And what's awesome about that, too, is you can put a lot of dimension in these flowers. So they don't have to be all one color. You can come in with multiple colors over top of them and just really, you know, make them awesome. So let's do that because we can. Do you like to color two character? Like I hate coloring in stamped images. That makes me crazy. You, and some you know people what? Love to color. You know what's funny is I don't like to color. Um, I like to color if I don't have to color in the lines. 
but if I have to color in the lines, like coloring in a stamped image, I hate it. <laughs> so I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. That color is just not dark enough for me. I don't know what to tell you what that's all about. But that's that's me. I, I can totally go with, you know, just sitting in and coloring a background or having, like I that page I showed you with the um, um, sun, the sunflower. That to me was like coloring because those crayons that I was using, the Neo Color ones, they're just like using a crayon and they just allow me just to paint. See the dimension I got by using two different colors there? Isn't that awesome? So you can really, you know, jazz up your stuff pretty nice if you just enjoy it. And all I'm doing is going in, this is really simple. Zoom in there a little bit for you. All I'm doing is going into the center of this flower. So I painted the whole thing one color, and now I'm just painting kind of the center and just a little bit up the leaves. And look at the difference that makes compared to that one. Awesome, huh? And you could come in with a third color in, in the center if you really wanted to. Sorry, running out of room and trying to stay on camera. <laughs> You all know what I'm talking about. We have these huge desks, and we um, actually craft in about a spot this big. Yeah, that's me. And I actually have two desks in here, and my other desk never is, I, I can never see the top of it. Look at that. Look how pretty those are. And the dimension I got instantly by putting two colors on there. Okay, let's put those to the side. Let those dry. Bring our painting back up here. Okay. Let me get those a little dry so I can work with them. They're flying around my desk. <laughs> they think they're fairies. But um, speaking of that, back to that uh, story I was telling you about the... Um, the, the butterflies down at Balboa Park. If you are on my Google Plus or even on my, sorry, I'm way out of camera there. Sorry, way, way out of camera. Um, go on to my Google Plus or even my Facebook page. I posted a, it's called Trip to Balboa Park, I think. And it shows them in there, those beautiful butterflies. Okay, liking that, but I definitely need some dewdrops. 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 It's got some dewdrops. Now this is where it would come in handy for me to have that adhesive done in my uh, that little bottle. It would be dewdrops. Dewdrops. I didn't tell you this one joke because I didn't think I was going to use them. Dewdrops are from Robin's Nest, and that's Robin's Nest Scrap, I believe. dot com. You can double check that for me. Put those there. Put those there. Yeah, the dewdrops would be perfect for that adhesive. I think that's going to be my page or my canvas. Let me see that. Hmm. Okay, I like that. Okay, we're going to start with that. Um, gel medium. Where did I put the gel medium? Gel medium. Hmm. Oh, guys, somebody seriously... Oh, you know, back to um, those fine line writers. You could use any type of acrylic paint in those liners, but you need to water it down a little bit. That's why I use the polymer to water down. Oh, where's my gel medium? I don't know where my gel medium is, so we're just going to use matte, uh, fluid matte medium, which will also work. It's just not as thick. This is definitely a product that's a lot thinner. It's more fluid, with the name being matte, fluid matte medium over gel mediums, more of a gel. Get the difference, gel, fluid. Okay. Okay. 
my fine line writer would be great to go in there and put some more detail into that um, particular stamp right there. Oh, sorry, off camera gluing. I am going to put some on top. Now, I do have to be careful because the um, watercolor behind will move. Watercolor here. Get this all to glue down. Um, I need to find out how many we have in the room real quick. Let me do that while I'm gluing this down. Okay, see the number? So we're going to go on to random.org and we are going to pick a winner. We actually have two winners. So Joe, if you want to bring up your little fun toys, I've got two winners. Let me know when you're ready. Um, how to win a prize from me is to go on to my group called All Things Terry Sproul. Nope, I think we lost you, Terry. And pardon me? We lost your video for a second, but you're back. Okay. You're breaking up. Um, and you can win, um, you can uh, get entered to win a prize. Okay, so prize number one is going to. <laughs> Victoria Reynolds. And she won. <laughs> she will win a prize that I'm going to send. And then here in a second, I'm going to get random.org up, and I'm going to pick somebody who's in the room also, and they're going to win this canvas. So I'm going to send that. So we're going to get two winners. So I promised you guys that whenever I did a canvas, that I was going to send it out. I'm going to put some more detail in this here in a second. And actually, <laughs> this is perfect. There's a little glue coming up right through the center of those flowers. So I'm going to put my dew drops right on top of them and let it hold it down. <laughs> that worked out nice. Except for that's not happening for those other flowers. So let's grab a paintbrush. Put some paint there and put those dew drops on top. Okay. Okay, so I did random.org and the winner is Angie. Angie, O R O B K O. Angie. I love Angie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't mean a sad one. That wasn't supposed to be sad. What a duck. Oh, my God. I need a whole new sound effect. Really. That was horrible, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Angie, no, Angie you know this is how we really feel. Really, we do love you, Angie. I promise. <laughs> so I'm grabbing my fine line writer again. And I'm going to just put some details over here on these flowers because, again, again, I always try to start off just to make sure there's not a bubble or something. See how it allows me to do some really simple details with hardly any effort? I love that. And even up here in these flowers, I can put some more details. So both of you, I need you both to um, find me on Facebook, PM me your address, and I will get a package out to you. Okay. The only thing I have left, I'm trying to put this needle back in there, is I know I wanted to try to put these on, but I forgot to bring the tool in. Have you ever seen these little um, edges? Let's see if I can get those. I don't know who sells these anymore. I have a ton of them. God, I can't get that to not be blurry. Oh, there you go. 
They're like little edges, they're decorative edges, and they fit perfectly on this canvas board. So you put them on the canvas board, and then I have a tool out in my shed that squeezes this closed. So you'll have this really pretty, simple little corner. See that? Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Angie. So I'm going to put that on all four corners, even though you're not going to see it because I don't have my little squeezy tool in here. I didn't think I was going to use them, and then I was going through my looking for brads, and I found them, and I went, oh, those would be pretty. <laughs> you know how it is. You go through your studio, and you're looking for something, something else, and you find something else that you want to use. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I will sign it down here in the bottom. And that's my canvas. So do we have any questions? Okay, I'm going to switch back cameras. I don't know if you realize this, uh, Joe, but you're still on um, showing me your screen. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry. So... Um, so I want to thank everybody for showing up, and again, when you go out and buy your Neo Colors, make sure you buy Neo Color 2s and not 1s. Completely different product. But live and learn. See, you get to learn through me. <laughs> the bad part was is I have to drive a really long way to get those other colors. <laughs> Husband got me extra stuff that year. He just doesn't know. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys all, oh, excuse me, not next Tuesday, the following Tuesday, which would be third, be the 10th, I think, March 10th, I believe. Okay, see you then. Bye. I have bought I some. Where that sound effect came from. That's okay. I'm stopping. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>